All right, Syed here. Uh, today we're going to talk about how you can make your development experience more pleasurable as well as more productive by customizing preferences in Visual Studio for Mac. We've got a lot of preferences to go through, so let's just go ahead and dive right in. OK, to get to preferences, you'll go to Visual Studio and uh, the preferences menu item here. Let's take a note of this keyboard shortcut, uh, command comma. We'll be using that going forward. Uh, so the, the first thing that I, that I recommend to new users with Visual Studio for Mac is to set uh, both the theme and uh, the code styling here. All right, so uh, for theme, we have a choice between light and dark. You can see I've got, uh, I've got the dark theme applied here. And uh, the, the other aspect is the, the editor theme, or the editor styling here, the color theme. Uh, you can see uh, I'm using uh, Solarize Dark, uh, but there's a lot of different uh, themes available. And uh, you could also download uh, custom themes as well online. We have support for a variety of different types of theme files. All right, you definitely want to make uh, you want to make you want to customize the uh, the the visual style as well as the the code theme to suit your needs there. So that's the first uh, preference. All right. So in addition to that. Uh, you might also want to take a look at customizing your fonts that are displayed in the editor here. Uh, we can see that uh, I've customized mine uh, to use a open source font and also kind of bumped up the, the font size uh, for demos. Uh, but you can set uh, either your text editor or the different pads to have whatever types of font and font sizes that you'd like there. So I'll go ahead and keep what I have for now. All right, so now let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the default behavior when Visual Studio for Mac uh, opens up. The, uh, the the default behavior is always to to show the the start window in Visual Studio for Mac. But uh, if if you're if it's common for you to work on the same solution day in and day out, uh, then you might want to take a look at load previous solution on startup. I'm going to go ahead and enable that load previous solution on startup here. And uh, let me go ahead and click OK here. We can see I've got a, a solution here called .NET New Web. Uh, it consists of about uh, four different projects. Let me go ahead and close the IDE, and then I'll relaunch it. All right, now we can see that we've, uh, we've reloaded Visual Studio for Mac. My previous solution was uh, successfully started up as I expected. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty big uh, productivity win if you're working on the same uh, solution day in and day out. Now let's take a look at some, uh, some additional editor preferences here. So I'll use uh, Command Comma to get back into Preferences. We'll go down into uh, the General tab for Text Editor. So myself, I, I don't. Uh, I'm not really using regions that much in my my C sharp code, uh, but you know, if you're like Barry Dorans, he really loves uh, adding regions into his C sharp code. So if you're if you're like him, you definitely want to come in here and check uh, fold regions by default. And uh, let's take a look. There's uh, there's some additional settings in here too that I wanted to go over with you. So let's go into markers and rulers. Uh, there's a there's a few kind of. Uh, options here that I think might be really handy for people here. Uh, let me slide this over to the right so we can see what these do. All right, so the first one will be uh, show indentation guides. Uh, so if you, look, if you look closely on my editor here, you can see where the, where the braces are. We have these visual indent guides. So these help you kind of figure out where in your code you are and, and what scope in your code you're at. Let me toggle this off. So you can see uh, when it's off, those indent guides don't show up. When it's on, uh, they do show up. Uh, so you definitely want to go through and take a look for that one. Let me see. Uh, there's also another one that's kind of interesting too. I don't, uh, I don't personally use it myself, but uh, but I but I do know several people who who really do love this feature. Let me go ahead and turn that on. Visualize change lines. All right. So the idea behind visualize change lines is to uh, essentially just uh, just kind of show you the lines which you've actually changed in your code. Uh, from when you actually opened it. So let me just go through, and I'm just going to make some, some uh, just kind of very basic, simple modifications. Just adding some white space here. Uh, you can see on the on the left hand side in the gutter, I get an indication as to you know what are the lines that I've recently touched here. Uh, let me go ahead and close that, and then I'll reopen it. So I'll save it. 
And uh, so yeah, so I wanted to show you that uh, the, the visual, the show change lines is not like a source control type of feature. And it's only, you know, what are the lines that I've recently changed in the editor? If you close the file out, uh, those, those do kind of get reset there. So that was one. Let's go back to, uh, let's go back to the, the preferences. Oh, another one that's, uh, that's pretty handy as well is uh, show invisible characters here. Uh, so if, if you wanted to see the line endings or any other invisible characters that, uh, that may appear in your file, you can en enable that. Uh, that's, that's also not a, uh, a setting that I normally use, but, uh, but I do know a lot of people uh, that, do, uh, that do like that feature. OK, so now let's move on. Um, we're we're going to move on to, uh, to tweaking the behavior of IntelliSense. But uh, let me kind of show you what's the, let me show you what's the default experience with IntelliSense when you're deleting characters here. All right, so I'm just going to go through and just delete some characters here. So I remove the, uh, the call to, to, that, uh, to that method there. And we can see as I was deleting characters, there was no IntelliSense to, to try and help me out if I wanted to then start completing that. Um, so if I wanted to, you know, after I made some deletions, I can do dot, and then the IntelliSense will reappear. Or uh, if I'm in the middle of, of some deletions, I can always do control space to get the IntelliSense to reappear. Uh, but, uh, but there's another way to do it as well. So let me just undo what I did. All right, so let me go back into preferences. And then we're going to go under uh, behavior and then C sharp. All right, so here we have the, the setting here that I wanted to let you know about. So show completion list after a character is deleted. So let me go ahead and enable that one. So now we can see here, uh, as I delete, uh, the completions themselves actually show up. So I don't have to uh, delete all the way back to the period, and I don't have to retype the period. Uh, as I make deletes, then uh, the completions will show up automatically for me. All right, so let's go back to that same area. So Command comma there. I'm going to go back up to text editor behavior uh, tab here, and uh, this th this is where you would set uh, settings for for the text editor uh, across different file types. Previously, we were inside the C sharp specific settings there. Uh, one that one that I think is very handy is uh, format document on save, and this is one that I typically do turn on for uh, for my IDE as I'm start starting to work with my my solutions here. So format document on save. So let me go through here. And uh, I've, I've already configured what I want the, the code formatting to look like. And let me, I'm going to make some changes here to kind of break the formatting a little bit. OK, so I've made, uh, I've made some changes here to kind of mess up my formatting. And then, OK, so then what I'll do is now I'm going to go ahead and do a save here. So uh, as I do a save, kind of keep an eye out on this code here. Okay, so we'll just uh, say save all. And we can see as I made that save, a Visual Studio for Mac automatically reformatted my code according to how I've configured that in preferences. We can go into preferences under source analysis for C sharp. And then uh, this is the area where you would actually define the, the styling of your code and, and what gets applied uh, as, you, as your documents get formatted there. OK, so now I'm going, to, I'm going to make a couple changes to this application to introduce a couple errors. So I'll remove a couple semicolons here and, uh, and a couple different files. OK, so I've made, I've made uh, two minor edits that will cause this application to not uh, build. Uh, so let me go to build, and let's take a look at what the, uh, what, the, what, the, what the experience is. So you can see there that I invoked a build. And then the, the error pad automatically showed up. So that's actually a preference which I've configured in my, in, my, in my version of this IDE here. So I'll go back into preferences. That was command uh, comma. And then I'm going to go into projects and build. And then right here, so jump, uh, no, this one actually, show error pad. Always, never, on errors or on errors or warnings. So typically what I do. Uh, I, th I think the default is never here, uh, but what I do, I set this to uh, to on errors, and then uh, whenever we do build, if there's an error, it will pop up, and then we can start addressing those errors, and then go from there. All right, so those are all the uh, kind of preference tweaks that I have for you today, but definitely do keep an eye out for more videos in this video series, and uh, also please take a look at our docs at aka.ms/. VSMAC docs, all one word. Thank you.